That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Consecration. The eighth film directed by Christopher Smith. Oh. Which is being released courtesy of IFC Midnight on December 10th, 2023. Do you know Christopher's other films? Yeah, we actually reviewed his last film, The Banishing. Oh. A uh, haunted house film set in the 30s uh, with a very interesting Sean Harris performance, if I remember correctly. It, I was just fine with that film. We have a dog in the room for the first time. <laughs> it's very distracting. She has, She's very distracting. She has flatulence uh, at the moment. Uh, oh, that's what the, 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 that's what the that dog was. farted, not Nick. But anyhow, the... <laughs> uh, anyhow, I'm probably a bigger fan of his earlier career, um, which I'm sure I referenced in the Banishing uh, video, but Severance, I think, and Triangle are probably my favorites of his. He did a film with Sean Bean called Black Death, which I think is worth watching. Um, and then Creep with Franca Potente uh, is... Oh, that's an interesting name. Say it again. Franca Potente from Run, Lola, Run. I'm not familiar, but I'll look this she, person up. a German lady. You've seen her in something, I'm sure. Well, this film, what did you think about it? Well, I, again, I, ha, I think I've seen all of Christopher Smith's films and, well, but one, and I like Jenna Malone quite a bit, so that's oh fine. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a dog fart. <laughs> uh... I, I am quite a fan of Jenna Malone, so I, I was interested to see her in this. Uh, ultimately, I didn't love it, but it's got some things. I didn't care for it either. I'm sorry. The basic story is Jenna Malone plays an eye doctor. It's set in the UK, modern time. And the opening scene is her basically saying, like, I don't believe in anything, but now I'm not so sure. And then we see her standing in the street with a nun holding a gun towards her. So it's made very clear that this is going to be like a religious thing and that her beliefs are going to be questioned. So she finds out, Jenna Malone's character, that her brother, who is a priest, has been involved in a murder-suicide at the convent he works in. In Scotland. In and a, Scotland. And of course, notably, Jenna Malone's character's name is Grace. So she goes out there um, and with the help of the detective working the case, tries to get information. And she ends up staying at the convent. She is very, um, like, sort of aggressively dismissive of what the head mistress, a mother superior is telling her, who's played by... Janet Suzman, who is, uh, was a very notable screen presence in the 1970s, nominated for the film Nicholas and Alexandra. Of course, she played Alexandra. She's a, a, in a day, a day in the Life of... A Day in the Death of Joe Egg. Uh, quite a few other notable films. But yeah, it's interesting to see her as the mother superior. Because mother superior is saying, oh, your brother was possessed, and that's what caused him to... Com <laughs> He fell into darkness. He fell into darkness. But of course, she's like, that's not that, That's not what happened. I need to find facts. But just to wrap it up, because it's very simple, we find out Grace is, of course, the Antichrist. Well, not literally. They don't use those words. No, but she's like possessed by some demon. And we get a lot of flashbacks to when she and her brother were children. And we see that like their father had locked them in cages. And they witnessed... Like Joan Crawford. The dad killing, like stabbing the mom to death. And we find out that she is possessed by something that is causing this violence. And while she's at the convent, several nuns are hurt or killed. And we learn that it's whatever is in her, whatever demon is responsible for it. And that her brother's death is really probably him trying to like lure her back to the convent so that maybe she can be cleansed. Because the convent tried to adopt them as children. They were aware of this kind of satanic power that was yep. inside her. So it's kind of like, almost like the Wicker Man where there's this secret plot to get this person back to this location. Uh, and notably, uh, Grace was adopted as a child. She wasn't, that wasn't her biological mother and father. But in the end, we see Grace sort of commit, we see like she has visions of like nuns falling from this cliff. And so she, we see Grace do that. So we think, oh, now Grace is dead. But she's not because the next scene, she's back in London, alive and well. Um, and the final scene is the opening scene where this mother superior who had not been killed confronts Grace and attempts to shoot her when a van strikes and kills mother superior. Mm -hmm. So clearly the devil is on Grace's side. Mm -hmm. 
much like Damien in The Omen. Um, and I was also reminded highly, I think Christopher Smith is trying to channel that Powell and Pressburger black narcissus uh, vibe with these n- nuns uh, on the cliff. This felt very basic to me. It's like a lot of things we've seen before, but like, you know, like because of you, I've seen a lot of like nun exploitation type films. Sure. I think they do, those films do a better job of presenting the nunnery or whatever, like in a more sort of intriguing way. So this, and then this is shot in that way that I always say I don't like, like a range of movies we've seen. We just reviewed The Locksmith, The Devil Conspiracy, kind of like a cheapy dark feel. There's a cheapness to it, you know, specifically with the special effects, I I think don't work that well. I, I was... I wasn't bothered by Jenna Malone's British accent. Well, for uh, people who like me talking about hair and makeup, I did start a 2023 like running list of the worst hair and makeup, and then at the end of the year I will give my top choices. But uh, Jenna Malone character and the young girl playing her as a kid... Well, that's clearly a wig. They will be entered as nominees because that wig game is atrocious. That, well, <laughs> the dad manhandling the little girl is like, oh, don't, you're going to tear Don't that shake hair. that wig off. The um, one thing I did like about the movie is the the gentleman playing the dad, mm-hmm. he was sufficiently creepy. The scene where we see him, like, everyone locked in cages and then him getting mad and running out and, like, stabbing the mom to death. And then we fast forward to present day and Jenna Malone goes to visit her dad to ask him, why did you do this to us? And that man looks, like, insane. And I thought, like, that... That actor's performance and how creepy it was was so good that I wish the movie would have revolved around him. Sure. And what he did to his family. Because, yeah, having a possessed child is a very common theme in films, but I don't think... We we always see it as, like, throughout the story... They have to be convinced. Right. Yeah. But wouldn't it have been interesting if the film starts with, this dad knows this little girl is something wrong with her, and the entire film is him maybe torturing her and the family, trying to figure out what to do... I would have preferred that, but... And then Danny Houston shows up as Father Romero from the Vatican to help investigate this murder-suicide, who seems to be kind of on Grace's side, but ultimately is not, uh, and, and then is also murdered. Some things I... Like, I don't have a lot of notes, but, like, we find out that Jenna's character, her and her brother, kept a... Like, the brother kept a journal... But it's in secret code, and it's this code that they developed as kids, and it is super... It um, is... <laughs> uh, detailed, precise, it just seems like unbelievable that not only did they develop this as kids, but that all these years later she could just read it like their own Their own secret Sanskrit. And I don't, you know, it's corny in that way that we see Jenna Malone reading it and the symbols change into, you know, English language words for her to read. There's a moment when one of the nuns tells Jenna Malone in regards to her brother that we rubbed our bellies together. He was so dirty we made black snakes appear. What did that mean to you? A uh, sexually repressed young woman that doesn't know what certain things are that's what i thought but like i thought that was <laughs> did i think there was any devilry in her having sex and no uh but who knows we're living in a world where there's this female antichrist that's just running around like i mentioned i don't like when the opening of the film tells you that there's something wrong so it's like already and then the fact that jenna malone's character is such a devout like atheist is just so heavy-handed combined with the opening line saying that I used to not believe anything, but now I'm not so sure. It just like, I don't like to be guided into a direction, you know, because sometimes that's like a false narrative. But in this film, it's true. That... Sure. And I think Janet Susman is actually kind of, it's interesting to see her, but it's, it feels like a waste of a role to trot her out here. Uh, I think an interesting element, though, is how Jenna Malone, as Grace, is not aware of being possessed like it's almost like a she's dissociated from the demon inside her and her her there's a portion of her that's protecting her from the that trauma and she's only starting to kind of get an inkling of it speaking of that i feel like the movie the reading which we reviewed and people don't like that we don't like it um it's terrible but that film is very sort of discreetly and nonsensically i think trying to hint at <clears throat> the main character monique suffering from a dissociative disorder, but also being possessed. And I kind of feel like if they would have taken the backstory of Jenna Malone's character in this movie and put it in that movie, that the reading might have been good. The read, uh, No, I think we did state that there were interesting ideas yeah. as well in the reading, but uh, I, I don't think that the filmmakers rightly decided what they were going for, and that's why it seems like a jumbled 
a jumbled mess. But in this film, yeah, the, the, the fact that Jenna's character doesn't know, like, it seems like she's, she really is separate from this thing that's possessing her is kind of interesting. Because her power is a threat to Christ. We're told uh and danny houston as much as i do like him he seems so insincere like i don't believe that this man this father romero believes half the drivel he's saying actually. i actually wrote that down too but also the detective do you know who played that character no i thought he was funny because he seemed annoyed the way i was annoyed watching this movie like come on this shit is stupid like he was annoyed with not only mother superior but with grace's character mm -hmm. and i've I thought it was funny because I had that same feeling watching this movie. Um, I don't really have anything else. I'd rather just rewatch Killer Nun with Anita Ekberg. But the end of the line, or the the end of the movie, the final line is: "My brother used to say I have a guardian angel, but now I'm not so sure." I'm like okay, so it, the beginning and the end are kind of the same sentiment. Uh, yeah. What would you give this movie? Two out of five. Yeah, I would give it two out of five. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>